Welcome to Screencast, our only entertainment podcast where we discuss all the entertainment news, TV shows, stream services, and movies. I'm your host, Kevin Coelho, and joining me today is the man with the three-finger movie scale, Nick Scarpino. That's me. Hello. Show, <laughs> show him off. What's the scale? Uh, let me brush him off. Hold on. Oh, 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 oh wow. There it is right there. Wow. Impressive. <laughs> Got wait, it. wait, wait. This is just its first configuration. Just like a Pokemon, it's got another one. There it is right there. Oh, no. There it is right there. I, wait. And then this is the best one right here. This yeah. is, that's this is the category be. I like. Right where you want to be. Jesus right Christ. Be. And to his right, my hetero life... for the audio listeners. So sorry. It's okay. And to his right, my hetero life mate, you don't know him as Tim to take Gettys. It's true. This show is recorded live every Friday at 11 a.m. on Twitch dot tv slash kind of funny games mm -hmm. and then post it on youtube dot com slash kind of funny and all your favorite podcast services if you enjoy this video or mp3 give it a little like it means a lot also hit that subscribe button and the little bell okay, if that's something you like doing it's quality that's good it's a lot of ice that doesn't seem accurate when you hold we got a lot of drinks a lot of ice yeah. something I, I've, I've had a situation going hydrated. on in my life What's where um i've been going to this starbucks over on west portal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As featured in the kind of funny game showcase. Uh, quick question: How's the parking around there? Terrible. Uh, it's, it's very bad. Yeah. And I'm you, definitely. Do you, you do you go one block over, or are you illegally parking? I've been doing some and you have parking. learned your lesson in an area that I should not be doing. Well, yeah, you paid a thousand dollar fine. Yeah, no, but I'm not parking in that space. I, I, I know better. I understand. But I've been going there for a while now, um, and it's at the point that they now, starting yesterday, have started making my drink mm -hmm. just Love when it. they see me walk in. Love it. Which, on one hand, I really appreciate. Dude, I respect that. On the other that. hand, it, it kind of gives me anxiety because I'm like, what if I want to switch it up? I haven't switched it up in yeah, three I've, months. I've, I don't know that I've. Ever Ever known you to switch up a it, Starbucks but it order? But it's like I don't know. So there's something about it where I'm just every like, once in a while when we were young, it was like I think hot chocolates you do. Yeah. Well, the thing about Starbucks is fuck them, right? They make billions of dollars. So if they accidentally make your drink, it's whatever. Yeah, I know. That, this, I'm gonna tell you one thing right now. This iced coffee, which I'm sure you've. You put other ice. He's diluted with ice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that costs him probably like twenty cents. To I understand. Oh, charge yeah. four dollars. It's that. more about me Pennies having to have that dollar. conversation. I'm considering going to the Starbucks in a safe way. Oh, no, wait, that. no, That's I like want you sad. to have that conversation because I That's, want them those to are be real like, Starbucks's. Hey. Those are the Starbucks employees that couldn't hack it at a real Starbucks. You know Damn. what I mean? The store in store Starbucks's. I don't like these at all. I don't like these at all. It's so mean. I'm just kidding, by the way. They're totally real all you Safeway Starbucks employees out there. <laughs> As people go like this, well, next time I see his dumbass, I'm spitting <laughs> in his fucking drink. <laughs> Please don't do that. That's one of my biggest fears. Someone spitting in my food. Spit into Kevin's food next time. No, you see him. that's not funny. Not it's even if hot. you work there though. Just walk up and whatever he's eating, just kind of spit on. Oh, I'm hurt you. I will no. hurt you hard. Nah, he's fine. All right, now now time for some housekeeping. <laughs> it's uh, kind of funny's fourth anniversary, and we're celebrating with good old fashioned fundraiser that ends at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So we've only got a couple more days to make a difference. Head over to patreon.com slash kind of funny uh, to see all the cool shows that we've added, like this one. Uh, hear about the world tour that was starting Here's the deal. Sunday. Next Wednesday, Wednesday the 30th, Wednesday, we're doing yep. our final stream, the 12-hour mm -hmm. stream, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., doing the crowdfunding. Will we get to London? We're getting real close, ladies Real and close. Uh, we're going to tally up all the numbers and on... That Wednesday, day during yeah, the stream, Wednesday, we'll, we'll say where we're at. We'll have the new thermometer. I let imagine that, know. that'll be after KFAF. Yes, we'll, we'll make that first yes. announcement. So that day, we're gonna do the two morning shows like normal, and then roll into the, the then stream. Twenty. Uh, 10 so yeah, stream. we're gonna and then we'll end at ten p.m. Um, to to keep crowdfunding. And mm -hmm. this weekend is our first ever meet and greet. We're doing for the kind of funny world tour in. Mm -hmm. Arizona. Tempe, the meet Arizona. and greet will be at Tempe, Arizona at Portillo's, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at... Was it 1 p.m.? 2 p.m. It's three hours. There you go. I was bad at math there. No worries, no worries. Um, on Sunday. Very exciting. Great. The day of the Rumble. Yeah. Uh, and this show is brought to you by our sponsors, Eero. But for more, uh, but more about that later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now it's time for the news. Yeah, the news. Yep. Oh, it's disturbing, but it. I love it. I really like it. My first story is about the trailer that came out for The Boys. Oh, the God. Boys. Oh, Ooh, damn. You all watched this trailer? We watched the trailer. I, I knew mm -hmm. nothing about this. Didn't know about the Neither comic. And yesterday, Nick pitched me on it. I'm like, that sounds yep. cool. Sounds watched the trailer really cool. today. What a damn cool show. What is this, Kevin? So this is... Um, 
based off a comic that is about a bunch of superheroes in a world where superheroes exist, and it looks like there's like this elite force of like superheroes. Like your Justice League, the Seven, the Seven, which is is such a cool name. It is a cool name, but when they said it in the trailer, there was only six of them on screen. Oh man, you're good at counting. It was good weird. For you. Didn't notice that. Yeah. Well, someone had to take the picture. You know? Ah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. That yeah. is a, a, a in, in the world of the boys, point. they don't understand yeah. the selfies. Yeah. Uh, uh, what I like about this is this is uh, coming from uh, the book was written by Garth Ennis, who was the guy that did wait, Preacher. Really quick, let me just sure. tell a little bit more of the plot or the story. So it looks like it's about superheroes in this world that aren't part of that elite group, and like just them being crazy assholes and having to be controlled by. Nick pitched it as, imagine if Superman was doing all the good stuff, but also doing a lot of cocaine when yeah. he gets home. Yeah. So the idea, this, I'm just reading the premise uh -huh. off the Wikipedia. The Boys takes place in, a, in, quote, a world where superheroes embrace the darker side of their massive celebrity and fame, and, quote, revolves around a group of vigilantes known informally as The Boys, who set out to take down corrupt superheroes with no more than blue-collar grit and a willingness to fight dirty. Hmm. That's so cool. So I'm just realizing right now that uh -huh. one of my friends is making the music for this. Really? Yeah. yeah. Who is it? Pretty random. I don't want to say names, okay, but it's right. pretty cool. So the two people in the poster, by the way, uh, that we're looking, uh, you're seeing behind us are Carl Urban, who is known from, obviously, like, Dread and Star Trek. And then, uh, so I think, is that Jack Quaid? Yes, that is. Well. Jack Quaid. Which I think is Dennis Quaid's son, right? Yes. Hmm. Dennis Quaid and maybe Meg is Ryan? He? I can't remember. There was also that. someone in this show named Aaron Moriarty. Spelled just like Collins Aaron. Whoa, that's oh, trippy. Oh, whoa, that's crazy. Maybe it's some time travel shit. <laughs> Wait, Elizabeth <laughs> Shoes in this too? Shut your mouth. Shut Dude, your front mouth. the trailer is absurdly good. Yeah, so I like, I mean, I read the first issue of this a mm -hmm. long time ago, so I'm probably gonna get this wrong in chat. Let me know if I'm right, and, and if you're in the comments, let me know if I'm right or wrong. But the idea is that these are a group of people who are hired by the CIA to basically cull and like control superheroes that are out of control. That's so rad. And I, and I and if you've ever read anything by Garth Ennis, my only touchdown with him is Preacher, mm -hmm. which it's is fucked dark. up. It's fucked up. Yeah. And I remember the first issue being something like really fucked, fucked dark yeah. shit happens. Are you like is, is this exciting you to read the comics? It is. I actually want to go back. That was one of the things I was thinking about. I've got some work to do uh, mm -hmm. on the plane ride to Scottsdale, but if I can get that done, I might treat myself to a few issues of this. Tim looked it up. I think there's like 72 issues right now. I think so. it's 70, oh, 79 it's issues. Right? 79 so it's ongoing? And that's it. Oh no, so it's, it's done. I think it's over in 79 and Ooh. that was the story. That's actually really nice. the hell out, out of yeah, me. Yeah, knock that out really quick. Nice. So um, what other, what else excites me, um, the other thing that excites me about this is it's Amazon Prime original, which, mm -hmm. which is I like Quality the Amazon stuff, Prime yeah. shows. You know, the last one that I that I just finished watching was the uh, Marvelous Miss Maisel. Yeah. It's Season great. two is fantastic. Go and watch and it if I you fucking haven't. love that it's here. Here are all the episodes. Let's go. So I don't have to wait for for any of this shit. And it's cool too. This is one of those projects that uh, Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen that they signed on to do a bunch of the different Amazon mm -hmm. things, including Invincible. Yeah. So so we'll see this. Yeah. This, this will be interesting if there's a. Uh, so Steven Ewan from uh, Walking Dead is, is cast. Oh, really? They didn't say as who, mm. but yeah. Interesting. Who could he be? Cool. I, I didn't know. see that. Yeah. I was looking for stuff yesterday. Damn. Can you look it up real quick? Sure. Invisible cast. Invincible. 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 <laughs> Invisible would be a different no. movie. <laughs> <laughs> a movie that's coming out uh, later this week. Nope, that's the a fan It's The Invisibles. Oh, movie, yeah. still? What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Really so interesting random. movie. Look at trailer. Foreign film. Let me spell uh, But yeah, Invisible I can't wait. Animated. So right now all we know oh, about the boys... Is it summer 2019 is when it's coming out? Yeah, cool. Invincible's animated, right? Oh, it's the animated. Okay, yeah. I didn't realize it was animated. Uh, let's see. Uh, Which this, kind of bums me out, honestly. This no, story dropped yesterday. Really I'm reading this over revengeofthefans.com. Uh, a funny thing happened this afternoon. A source of mine dropped it. Uh, like, in, in oh, let's see. And yes, it looks like Kirkman coming off. Season. That's why I didn't include it, because I felt like it was very rumory. It wasn't confirmed, right? Uh, it says of note, Stephen Yun and Carrie Fayton will lead their voice, will lend their voices to the animated series in undisclosed roles. Yun famously played Glenn Ree through 81 episodes. Oh, geez, spoilers, dude! And six seasons of The Walking Dead before uh, meeting a gruesome. Okay, all right, all That's right. A spoiler That's part, a Nick. fucking spoiler. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> uh, and Peyton has played King uh, Ezekiel since 2018. Oh, okay, so they're stealing basically half the Walking Dead cast. Makes sense. It's a Kirkman property. Uh, but the noteworthy cast members don't stop there. Other names that drew the attention uh, on the cast list, uh, Deadpool 2, Zazie Beetz, uh, as well as Clancy Brown. Uh, obviously, Clancy Brown's got to voice everything. Zachary Quinto, Jason Matsukas, wow. Jillian Jacobs, uh, Andrew Ray uh, Reynolds, and Chris. Go for it, Nick. Diamantopoulos. Nailed it. <laughs> Absolutely nailed Topopolis. it. Zazie Beetz, dude. Hell you yeah. got to imagine. Wait, so is this confirmed? This isn't just like some rumor? 
This looks like a cast list. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't read the whole story. Well, what was the like the first <laughs> line, the first paragraph there? So this guy says, a funny thing happened this afternoon. A source of mine dropped me a line asking if I was interested in any intel regarding Robert Kirkman's up and coming Amazon animated Sounds series. Sounds like a rumor. Based on a comic book he co-created by the same name, despite not knowing much about the property, I said yes. And then after a false alarm created a change in the show's production company, I found out the cast for the show. So, so it sounds yeah. like this is confirmed. Or at least this person. No, it sounds, it sounds like, like it's a total rumor. rumor. Yeah. <laughs> no, he said, and then after a false alarm created by a change in the show's pr- uh, production company, I found out the cast for the show. Oh, I guess I don't know. Yeah, but I think he's saying from the guy. Got it. So this co-created it. So it's like how many people co-created? I buy it. This, like that list sounds very like dialed in. Mm-hmm. So. I believe this, but yeah, it, it is it is a rumor. But mm. that that's a cool cast. Yeah, it's a really cool cast. Still, I don't want it to be. I just because I feel like it could work as an actual show, a live animated show, a live action show, a live action I, show. I, I don't think animated. it could. I think that there's there's too much violence and there's there's too much uh, effects that they would have to get right with a lot of the characters. Like yeah, they, they need to. Mm-hmm. If they're not going to make this a movie, then it yeah, needs to be exactly. Animated, I think because mm-hmm. because the idea behind what we're talking about here, the um. The boys. the boys is more of a character driven thing, right? You're just, it's more espionage, it's more spy. You can have some superhero stuff that we saw in the trailer, like she jumps into the car yeah. smash. And it looks great. It looks really really good, cool. Yeah. But that has to be sparing. Yeah. Mm. You know, you can't do that every other shot. And with Invincible, he's fucking flying into, like, half of the damn thing happens in space with aliens everywhere. Yeah. And, like, how and, are you like, going to do Alan? How are you going to do Just all constantly those flying the entire yeah. time. It's like, that's the type of thing that you either have to go HBO or mm. movie to yeah. even kind of get it right. Yeah. Yeah. But so animated. You don't think Amazon could do that? I don't. I feel like Amazon could do it. I mean, the, the closest tick analog is the tick. Bad. It yeah. didn't look bad. I li- I liked it. I thought it, they did a great job. I just hope they don't just That's stop doing the thing too. where you do half a season and then wait a long time and then do and do the next half. Yeah, it's really I really. I didn't like that with the tick. Don't like it. At that all. actually made me stop watching the tick because I came tick back to it. I was you like, should oh. come. <laughs> you should come mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. I'll probably watch it at some point. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it very much. All right, uh, Barrett. The next story. Resident Evil TV series is in the works. At Netflix. So uh, the series will maintain the basic premise of the games while exploring the inner workings of the Umbrella Corporation and the post-apocalyptic world created by the outbreak of the T-Virus. The report adds that the show expected to incorporate all of the Resident Evil signature elements, including action scenes and Easter eggs. All right. I have no real hope for this. Uh-huh. Uh, this is another one that, and this is probably going to be an unpopular opinion, but I think this would be better served as an animated show. Uh, we just saw with Netflix. With this, I agree. Because I think this is the kind of extreme violence that like would be best done by like an animated series. With Netflix's Castlevania, they proved that mm-hmm. they can do that. And yeah. that they can create something really special that is true to the games and uh, actually serves... Uh, purpose of telling the story differently than the games can tell, right? Mm-hmm. With Resident Evil, we've seen them try to do this over the course of a thirteen. Which, and you movies. said the last movie, not that bad. Is that what you no, said? No, no, it's horrible. But oh, it's like okay. you know, it's it kind of it, by that point they're like, yeah. all right, we're, let's just fucking go crazy with this. But it, it's not Resident Evil. Like the movies are yeah, not yeah, yeah, what yeah. that description just said about right, trying to stay right. true to the games. But, like, what games are they trying to stay true to? Because towards the end, they're like, oh, the action scenes or whatever. No, no, no. That sounds like Resident Evil 6 or Resident Evil 5. We don't want that. No one wants that. Don't do that. They're going to do that. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. I'm cautiously optimistic. Are you? <laughs> sure, why not? I mean, the thing for me is I'm not a huge Resident Evil fan, uh-huh. so I really don't care. Yeah. Um, so do you want more zombie-like shows? And that's the bigger movies? problem yeah. is that yeah. I think it needs to be animated because Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Was a thing. It's, it's dead now. It's still a thing. Is it? It is. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, it's, yeah, it's still, still happening, but is it still a thing? It is, I yeah. feel like people aren't excited has, about it. Doesn't it doesn't have the cultural relevance that it had, like, say, two years ago, but it's still mm. a big deal. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, it's definitely, like, going down, but it is still, it is the zombie show. And it's mm. like, if that zombie show can't get it right, this is not going to get it right. Yeah. I, I will say this, though. If they can capture the vibe of, like, some of the original Resident Evil, like not going as big. Cause the problem with Walking Dead is like, it's so big and so overarching that it feels like you can, that my, my, my biggest problem coming into it. And I know they told great stories, but was that it feels like you can never solve this problem with Resident Evil. It's kind of cool if they can just put it in the, in the town that it was intended and have it be, have it be that vibe. I would be into it. I'd watch it. Mm-hmm. Especially if it like launched around October time or like September, October time, right around that. Yeah, really going cool. into uh, Halloween. And it'd be cool. Yeah. I think that the only way that this can really catch my attention, and there's no chance bring to bring back Mila Jovovich. Uh, 100%, yeah, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, I like her. She's great. I like her. She's great. But bring back the other person that was in it who played something else, the, the blonde yeah. character. No, was, the other one. The, the was, there was a blonde the cop lady woman from too, right? Fast and the Furious. Was she in it? No. Um, God, 
What's her name? Ali Landry was the Yeah, it's Ali Landry. That's what I'm yeah, thinking. I don't know what you're talking about. Wasn't, uh, whatchamacallit? She the, might have been the, yeah, the Michelle Brazilian. Rodriguez first off, the Michelle Rodriguez is not a cop at all. She's a cop. Opposite of the cop in Fast and Furious? No, not in Fast and Furious. In uh, Resident Evil 1, right? When she, because they're like getting away, the they're characters. on the train, and she's a cop and she, or security agent, maybe. Look at the fucking poster for the first Resident Evil. Let me see it. It's so bad. <laughs> the only way that this could catch my attention would be if it was a very, very, very small story. Not even Raccoon City. Not even mm. like that big. It is in a mansion. The whole thing is in a mansion. Holy it is a shit. very small thing where there You'd is. You want them. a whole season in a mansion? One season. Let's go eight episodes. Why was uh-huh. Michelle Rodriguez eight? this big of a star? That's I the don't biggest know, problem. Why do they keep putting her in things? She was so mad at everything. She the, just goes like boo boo. Yeah. I don't think they keep putting her in things. This they was just, this was her moment. This, this was, was, this was this and Fast no, and Furious, and she was in Lost. And it's she was in deal. Blue Crush. She got kicked off Lost. Blue Crush. Yeah. Uh, but no, I wouldn't say a small. Don't drink and drive. Eight eight episode season and. You you keep it in the mansion or you know surrounding mansions. It's mm-hmm. the plot of Resident Evil One. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like actually cool. make it about so them. So you're saying you don't want them going and underground like, and getting this giant? Well, I mean, I just think I, I think Evil, I think you just like, keep it small at first, like Tim's talking about, and really just kind of revolve around a, 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 like a small cast thing. of characters. Yeah. Have some Stuck. mystery of like what's going on. You can like, have each episode like be like from someone else's perspective exactly mm. kind people of like tying really into like cool. what the games are like people get stuck on other sides of walls really and have cool. to figure yeah. it out whatever but what i would want is i don't want it to actually be the plot from resident evil one right i would still want to be surprised by things i would want there to be a group of people you don't know who's good who's bad and like there's twists and turns that would be fucking awesome you don't want do this that. you don't want that people Nick fighting the screen counts. cap of resident evil retribution i mean that's what we're gonna get that is resident I know. Evil that's 6. the problem is you, i don't know we'll see we'll see who knows? Yeah. Netflix can surprise you. Yeah, it Maybe can make something cool. They can have. be very surprising. They made Castlevania a cool thing, dude. I, I I'm, I'm a big fan of a lot of the stuff they put out lately. Uh, I like Sabrina. I thought they, I thought they yeah, nailed the vibe fun. of that. Yeah, I thought yeah, it was yeah. fun. If they can get something like that, cool, though. whatever. They also made Death I didn't Note. Love though. it, but what's that? They also made Death Note though. So just, just saying. Which had one like you know okay scene in it at the end there. Yeah, right? yeah. I didn't mind the Death, Death Note remake. Yeah, Death Note gets kind of way too much. I didn't shit. hate it, but I also didn't like like it. Yeah, I was I, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. I want to see, but it got people talking about Death Note again, which is always good. Yeah, yeah. All right, Barrett. Next story. Matt Smith uh, to star with Jared Leto in the Marvel spinoff Morbius movie. Matt Smith is in final talks to join Jared Leto in Morbius, a film based on the Spider-Man villain of the same name. I just want to bring this story up to remind people that Morbius is still happening. I wouldn't call this a a Marvel spinoff. I would call this a Sony-verse spinoff. It's so upsetting. I really, I don't want this to happen, yet it's still happening. Here's the thing. If, here's my prediction. If they nail... The Walking Phoenix solo Joker movie, anything is possible. That'll set the tone for I everything else. I disagree entirely. No, I'm just yeah. totally joking. Yeah, They're no, not going to fucking nail it. I don't care. No, but that's the thing. Like, but they, they, they could <laughs> nail the Joker thing, I think. Joker. I, cool. I don't think so. I don't think that they're going to. I think yeah. they could. Joker's sure. interesting. Joker is a name people care uh-huh. about. Right. There's a lot going in there. People like. Well, you don't Joaquin care about Phoenix. Morbius. No one cares about Morbius, and it's like <laughs> it's they're very here. Sad. It's like, oh well, Venom did super well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morbius is not Venom. Morbius is not Venom. It's not. Yeah, one but they'll for just one. have him talking to himself with a big long tongue, and everyone will be like, "Cool, let's get super fucking high and go see this movie and what support." Are you talking about? I don't know who the fuck liked Venom. Everyone be, like, how did Venom do so well? People really people went are out to dumb. see it. I'll never forget. People I was like, "Wow, dumb. that movie sucked. It's gonna tank." Yep. And then the next and day, they're like, "It like, made a billion dollars," and I'm like, "Who the so fuck upsetting. went to see that movie?" Lots and lots of people. Let me put it this way: yeah. I haven't even seen Aquaman yet. If I hadn't. If I didn't have to see Venom, Aquaman's I probably wouldn't have seen uh, Aquaman, Venom. Aquaman, right there, dude. Right in the middle? Right in the middle, dude. Right in, this thing right in the middle. middle. Venom's not the worst movie ever. It's, it's not good, not, It's not good. It's yeah. not bad. And it's like, like, what's worse is it's, it's, it's like, a bad yeah. Venom. Like, it, it, it makes Venom's character lame. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. No one Remember when Venom movies. was see, like, Brian McBride uh, 13 in the chest? Like, Venom I'm was hell fun. How high were you when you saw that movie, Brian? So high. Scale of fucking one to blitz. How high were you? He's on the blitz scale. Because that movie made no sense. No I don't sense even at think, all. I don't even think Michelle Williams knew what fucking movie she was in. <laughs> she was like, am I doing Marilyn again? They're like, no, 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 you already did that movie. It was bad. It was a bad time the was first time. Her Marilyn movie? Yeah. It was weird. Anyways, this just makes me sad. And more importantly, the longer Sony is successful with the Spider-Man label, they're going to be able to keep making Spider-Man movies and not want to sell it to Marvel. And which I think long term puts it at risk of... 
them pulling away from their Marvel deal that they've done. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally. And it's just like, no, I don't I mean, want to have a Spider-Man movie. I don't want our young Tom Holland Spider-Man to be pulled out of that universe and their own movies. And I could see that happening if these movies go do well. Like, that's you, the thing. Like, Tom Holland yeah. getting pulled into this bullshit mm-hmm. is, is likely... Like I, would I say, really if this, hope not. These dollar signs keep up. I um, hope there's some, some contractual stuff that keeps that not. from happening. God. And on top of that, That's it's so like scary. the more deeper they go into this, the more characters we're not going to see done correct in MCU. Mm-hmm. Venom is is fucked now, right? Morbius is about to get fucked. <laughs> and like, let's see, are they going to bring Black Cat and stuff? Is Black and Silver whatever the fuck they're called? It's still going to be. Ca- a thing? I thought they cancel Black. I and hope silver. they did. But my point is, it's like silver we're just going right? to get deeper and deeper into Sable. the Rogues Gallery and the supporting cast of the Spider Man world. And there's going to be characters that we're either not going to see or they're going to have to be drastically reimagined mm-hmm. to be able to fit. So if you want to stop that future, folks, you have to stop watching these movies. Be the difference you want to see in the world. Gandhi said that. Barrett, next story. Lego Batman movie director and Netflix team up on uh, up for Miller World adaptation Reborn. Now, do any of you guys know what this comic, Reborn, is? I do not. Yeah. No. But you know Mark Miller. Mark Miller, he put out the tweet earlier this week mm-hmm. being like, hey, stay tuned. We got some, some news big news coming. in the Millarverse or whatever mm-hmm. the fuck they're calling it. Millar uh, World. Millar World. Yeah. Great. Um, but this is a big, big announcement that they made last year yeah. where he was partnering up with Netflix, Netflix to bring a whole bunch of different whole things, bunch which, of is, things. which is cool. They stuff. got the rights to kick ass. I just typed uh, in Reborn and did an image search and this came up. That's yeah, it's terrifying. Don't, don't Google Reborn. I also made that mistake. You have to Jesus Google God. Reborn Millar. comics or yeah. Millar or poster. Because it's just a bunch of babies. It's weird. And it's very weird. Very, it makes me very uncomfortable. It's a baby doll that was just like dissected. It was fucking No, strange. that's... Jesus. All right, let's move on from that. What happened? Uh, that? So you guys don't know the premise of this comic? Cause no. Let me read it to you then. Uh, the, fi- uh, the sci-fi fantasy comic series by Miller tells the story of an 80-year-old woman, Bonnie Black, who dies in a Ma- uh, Manhattan hospital only to find herself reborn in the prime of life in the afterlife world of Siren Tara, Tara. Uh, Dastria, a magical land of monsters and dragons where good and evil are waging an eternal battle. Bullock could potentially lead the cast in the movie. I'm a big fan of him. Uh huh. Me done too. A lot of really He's great done stuff. a lot of great stuff. Kick Ass being uh, one of my favorites. Also, he did Kingsman. My, Kingsman, my favorite uh, iteration of Avengers: The Ultimates comic. Yeah. He, he oh, wrote so Volume good. One, which was fantastic. Yeah. And then Nick it's kind Kronos. of the, the comic that the uh, Avengers movie was lightly based on. Yeah. Um. So he did a great job there. Very and lightly. He's an, I yeah, say very lightly because like it's a lot darker in the Ultimates. As much as Civil War is based in Civil War. It's, yeah. It's like what were you saying, Kev? I said he also uh, did Cronauts. Cro- oh, Chrononauts. Yeah, Chrononauts. Yeah, I really like that one. The comic you enjoyed. Yeah, I, I recommended uh, that for Greg. He, uh, it got canceled. <laughs> Fast. But, oh, the comic? Yeah, I think yeah. we only had a few issues. Uh, but Mark Millar is just, his mind is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. He also did Wanted. Uh, yeah, which is a great, a much better comic than a movie, although I don't hate the movie. Once it was only like a, it was a graphic novel, right? It was only like a quick limited run thing, right? Yeah, it's one, one, uh, that's the one where the character in the comic looks like Eminem. Yeah. But in the the movie, they were like, you know, who we should cast instead of that? Angelina Jolie and James McAvoy and make James it completely McAvoy was great different. In it. It completely. Did you ever read Once did... in the Comic Book? Also, no, what was the actress? Wait, hold on. What was the actress there? Angelina Jolie. Oh, okay, I thought you said that funny. Never mind. I did. I slurred my speech because okay. I had way too much. I, I thought you were trying to mess with me again by screwing it up. No, my apologies. I didn't realize that was James McAvoy. Oh yeah, yeah. I Very so. young. Yeah. James it was James funny because because wow. I, I went on a tear when they were when they first started taking a lot of these properties and making them into movies. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna read the graphic novel, and I read it. And I was like, this is fucking awesome. And then I went and saw the movie. I'm like, this is not that no. novel. Yeah. It's totally different. It's and totally, completely different. Totally dumb. Yeah. Mm. The the you comic the is much much better. See, there's the other side of that argument. I think is kick ass where there's the comic and the the movie and they're they're very different but mm-hmm. i think that serves it yeah. well because it's i feel like they did a good job of translating it to the medium and having it work with, differently with kick ass one would you say it's very different because i think it's it's similar 90 percent, and they make some changes that i think uh, like make the character stronger i say I, the relationship uh he has with the female uh with the like love interest is yeah very that's the bi- that's the biggest difference i think the difference is that they make though even though mm-hmm. like it is just 10 percent, mm-hmm. drastically changed the entire point. sure going the entire forward tone, things, the entire yeah, themes yeah. the, the way the character is like so I, is, I feel like that's different kick-ass 2 is significantly different 
than the comic. Yeah, yeah and significantly. Kick Ass Two, not a great movie. No, no, no. It's very disappointing. Yeah, yeah. Kick Ass Two, the comic, uh, fucking awesome. Anyways, like, literally, I, if you if you read the Wanted comic and then watched the Wanted movie and didn't know they were similar, you would have no idea they were no like idea. He's hundred percent right. No it, idea. The whole like basic the only thing premise they really kept is was, super different. Yeah, the only thing they kept was like he's an assassin and it's called Wanted, and that's pretty much it. He's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so mm. weird. It's worth reading. Right. You should definitely yeah. check like it out. Resident Evil. But uh, any interest in this? No, no. no. Yeah. Sandra Bullock. Right now, Sandra Bullock's getting a little too de- oversaturated with me. Like, there's Bird Box? <laughs> there's Bird Box, there's Oceans, there's all these things that she's doing. And this is my big question for her. Ocean right? was like a year and a half ago. This is my big question for her. Okay. Where the fuck is the Heat 2? Where is it? Thank you, Barrett. Do you watch the Heat 1? Hey, That's Sandy. question for her. Hey, Sandy. What up? Melissa McCarthy ain't doing shit. She's doing indies and shit. Her career is... Let's go. She got nominated for an Oscar. Shut yeah. up, Barrett. Shut up. I didn't see that movie though. Oh, I saw it. She liked it a lot. Really? Yeah. It looked like a movie that wasn't that it's I depressing. wasn't interested in. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. Based on a real story. Yeah. Depressing. Anyways, Barrett. Next story. Fast and the Fear uh Fast and the Furious female protagonist. Vin Diesel posted an Instagram post that we have right there where he says, As you know, there are three new spin-offs that we have promised Universal, which I did not know. Did you, were you aware that they were going to do three spin-offs? So, so this is a weird thing where I feel like this is kind of retconning information to uh-huh. just present it as as if it's this uh, yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. we should all expect. That is not true. That is not something no? that we knew. There had been rumors for spin-offs for years, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I feel the Hobbs and Shaw thing happened um, amidst the, the infighting of the family mm-hmm. and the whole The Rock, Vin Diesel, Tyrese. Which still to this day stresses To this day is a WWE-esque yeah. like, disaster thing, but it's real. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we know we're, we're getting Hobbs and Shaw this year. All this other stuff, we'll see if it happens. I think that the success of Hobbs and Shaw will determine how many of these spinoffs actually happen. And I also think that this is a direct reaction to uh, Michelle Rodriguez's um, tirade. She went on a couple years ago being like, there's not enough like respect for the women in this franchise. Yeah, but didn't it, wasn't there the, already a reaction in the sense that like they made the characters more like cool, like the fighting better and no, because like, this was after bigger scenes after eight. Oh, that, really? Uh, that she was saying yeah, it's like she she was saying that she's like we've been in how many movies together and I've had maybe one line with Jordana Brewster, and it's like that's yeah. interesting shit, but. Uh, so here continuing we his post, uh, well, this week we heard a pitch for the female, f- no, the fast female protagonist-driven spinoff I created in 2017, sure. and you can tell by the smile on Samantha's face, it's very exciting. <laughs> Who is Samantha? Yeah, I don't know. Who is this person? <laughs> Who are these people? He doesn't. This post is people. very, very confusing to me, <laughs> uh-huh. and I don't understand. I don't know who Nicole Perman is. I don't know. They're, like, they're, oh, the, they're all writers. They're, they're writers. They're all writers that have yeah. worked on MCU movies. Okay. So that's exciting stuff. Um, obviously, I love Fast and Furious. Yeah. I want Give as much more as possible. Yeah. And like until they like really fucking suck again. Yeah. Um, I'm totally here's, in. Here's wait, my, wait, hold here's on my pitch. That. Here's my pitch for this fast female thing. Right. Bring back Ronda Rousey. Right. Mm-hmm. Letty and Ronda Rousey have to team up to go on a mission. Together, I love it. And then they fuck people up. And the, the last person I have to fuck up is Gina Carano. And mm-hmm. it's great. It's just an MMA fight for but like eight hours. How do you make it so Ronda has no lines? Because she's not a great actress. She's getting better, man. Dude, she's yeah. getting way she's getting better. Because yeah. WWE, she has oh, to cut that's she's, also not, she's also not suffering severe brain damage every six months by fighting the, in the cage. So it's she's getting true. better. Yeah. She's getting better. Real talk, not to go off on a tangent here, no, but go for Ronda it. Rousey like is... She bucks the trend. It's like yeah. everyone was kind of looking at her like, oh, geez, she's coming to WWE. She's going to be just this beating up everybody and like really bad on the mic. She's not great, but like she's definitely getting better. She's a great performer. She looks so happy every time every I single see time, her. Yeah. She's Again, getting, she's, she's not, not suffering kidding. fucking brain damage every time she goes into the ring. I'd be happy too. You have any idea like the pressure she was under when she was champ at UFC? Fuck that, dude. It's way more fun. I, I, I can guarantee she's having way more fun now. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what this movie's going to be. Uh, because it's going to be the female Hobbs and Shaw, and that's that's. I don't know. I kind of see them. Don't you think Michelle do Rodriguez? Can, don't you think she deserves her own franchise? That's, they're not going to give it to her. Yeah, and so. that's the problem. Like, like for the uh, the spinoff, we have The Rock, and I feel like he is someone that people can be like, oh yeah, The Rock. I want more of him. But like on as far as the female cast goes, like, do we have a There's character? One person. I don't want to. I don't want to say her name though. 
because I don't want to spoil anything for people that are watching along right now. Fast and Furious in review. That's a different mm. show, Tim. Mm. This is a new show. This yeah. is a hard hitting. Yeah, you show. can spoil here. You, you want me to put the spoil shit. bros? No, I don't want to do that. You okay. spoil. We shit. have a spoil bros that. graphic that we can play. Mm. He's talking no, about. No, you know what? I don't think I put it in. No. Ting ting. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It doesn't have to happen canonically. It could happen. I don't know. Anyone. I don't know. Oh man! That'd oh be a man! Great spin off. Okay. That'd be a in great spin off. In between, uh, was it five and six? Here's the thing for me: is this interesting news? Yeah. Whatever. Until we actually know what it is, it doesn't exist. I want to know what the third spin off is. If Hobbs and Shaw's one, this is another. Here's here's what I think it is. Are we finally fucking getting a Han yeah, solo? Yeah, it's going to be Han. But I feel it's like, got to be Han. Dude. But I feel like here's it's here's my here's my pitch for that third one: Han and the kid from Tokyo Drift. Just hanging out in Tokyo, and it's just terrible. <laughs> what? No, no, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that, that at all. That guy is 75 years old now. Han, it, they're both old now, probably. Han? That no, guy is 36 years old right now. Get the hell out. 36. You're lying. 36. There's no way. He was like 30 when he did that uh, movie. I can't wait to talk <laughs> about it. Like, he's going to be a high school he kid. He wasn't like, like 30. He was way younger. Was he really? He just oh, that's looked. so sad. <laughs> yeah. When did Tokyo Drift come out? I would love a Han movie. I want a Han movie that takes place... After three, and I don't think they can do anything with this anymore. franchise, right? Like the franchise has gotten so opened up, it's basically they're basically like fucking superheroes now. Who cares? Anything can happen. Makes sense, but okay. What what I was saying? Or what he was saying? What he was just oh, saying? Okay. Oh well, I just because I I don't want events to happen the way that we think they have. I mm. want a, a four. I think it was mm-hmm, four. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. style. Thing. Man, I really don't like talking Vegas. There was one more Vin Diesel uh, Instagram post that came out the following day where he said, do, 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 do. On, a, uh, on a later post, Diesel announced, crew heads out to London next month for the next chapter. Hashtag Fast 9. So that yeah, means they're going to start filming. Dude, I mean, that's I'm, crazy. I'm surprised they haven't already started filming. Like Fast 9, this is uh, the longest break we've had without a proper Fast and Furious movie mm-hmm. since they, they mm-hmm. kind of got back into it with 5. Like we were on like every two year schedule pretty yeah. much. And this is weird. They, I, I, obviously, Paul Walker's situation. Right. Like, well, they had, to, they had to wait to, for, for new vehicles to actually be invented because they've raced yeah. everything, including mm-hmm. a fucking submarine. Mm-hmm. It's true. Now they're going to race a space shuttle in this next one. I guarantee at some point Fast is going to space. I really yeah, hope so. Dude. Frankly, that's what I want from What them. if it was this? We'll what if it was Fast and Furious 19, Faster Than Light, and it's just about <gasps> them trying to achieve light speed? Whoa. Vin Diesel's like, like a scientist oh, working on a I computer. And then Tej is like, I have a fucking astrophysicist. <laughs> Luda. <laughs> <laughs> Too fast through the light. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm done. All right. No, it's all right. Yeah. Next story, Barrett. <laughs> Game of Thrones season eight episodes length reportedly leaked. Why does it say saison? <laughs> oh, it's it's in French. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> it's a French. It's a French. Uh, here, I'll I'll read the story. <laughs> Why I was like, does that, that say saison? <laughs> <laughs> Were you not wondering that? I'll let no, you I was like, get what the your fuck? giggles out. Go. You Go. good? All right. A report from a meeting of a group of TV networks in France has revealed the alleged runtime for the first or for the final six episodes of the HBO Game of Thrones. The magazine claims the first two episodes here. Let's go to the next. Hold on. Before you get Wait. to the serious news, I have something I need to say. Yeah. Like, I like how this picture makes it look like Jon Snow is <laughs> shorter. Is <laughs> Peter Dinklage's size. <laughs> Wait, which that's one? That's great. Like, just look how they're standing. See, see like Peter Dinklage on the top right corner? Oh, wow, that's funny. Saying, I yeah. thought you meant the little guy down there is like a hobbit. <laughs> There's no, the little guy down there. there. He's like, hello, listen to so me. On I have here, a so on here, it says uh, six by nine, 90 minutes each, which is the speaker then clarified the times, which, uh, Barry, let's go to the next tweet so that everyone can see it. There you go. Uh, so episode one, 60 minutes. Episode two, 60 minutes. And then episode three to six, 80 minutes. Oh, now, it's a lot of Game of Thrones. Interesting thing to note here yeah, is, quote unquote, hour long television programs are actually 44 minutes. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So because of commercials. Yeah, but HBO, when they do an hour long, it's usually around an hour. It is. Yeah. But with Game of Thrones, traditionally, mm-hmm. it's closer to the between 40 and 50 minute. Mark. Well, last season actually pretty last long. Last season was different last though, season, because yeah. it was condensed. Just right, like right, this right, one. Yeah. But these numbers are insane. Insane. So yeah, last season's uh, episodes were 59, 59, 63, 50, 59, 71, and then 81. So those last two were heavy, and we're going to get almost a complete season of that 
if these rumors are true. These are rumors, but God, I want them to be true. I believe them I'm too. I'm so excited. There's so much they got to get through in such little time. We only have six episodes left. Mm-hmm. We got to get everything buttoned up, dialed in. But they can do it. I, oh, they're yeah, glad yeah, to do yeah. it. God, I'm excited. I cannot wait. We're so close. Nick, you excited at all? I am excited for this. Um, I, it's it's to me it's it's interesting because they're I I'm I'm jacked for the last season of Game of Thrones, but then they're doing the prequel stuff, and I'm like, oh god, but the don't pe- do that. The prequel stuff is so distant. No. Remember, it takes place. I'm not exaggerating. Eight thousand years before the events that happen here. Yeah, I don't care. About eight thousand. That's the thing. You don't have to care about it. Like those are like, it's so far in time that those are all like. Not real stories, as doesn't far as matter. I'm concerned. It doesn't matter. I don't like I don't like prequel stuff. I've just decided that. I think like it just I just don't like but it. You do have the option of not watching it. No, I probably won't watch it. Yeah, that's uh, it's very. I just, I'm just not as excited for it. We'll, yeah. we'll see. I'll, you you, maybe even, I'll watch the yeah. first episode, but I don't know. I want my thing is eight seasons of Game of Thrones. That's enough, right? Mm-hmm. I don't need spinoffs of it. That's eight seasons of television. Yeah. It's great. It's perfect. But, I don't need more. To me, it just it's just like we're just trying to cash in. We're trying to capitalize off this brand. But it's here's like, the thing. On. Railroad. We've been burned before. He's got Fear a the lot Walking of Dead. content Whoa. out there. Like he's written a lot of like backstory and side books and stuff like that that they can make stories out of, and the stories are cool. Yeah, but to me, it just kind of like every time they try to do this. I'm mean, not every time. I'm just obviously thinking about the negative times. There's there've mm-hmm. been plenty of prequels that were fine. Sure, but the ones that that really stick out to me in the in the past are. You know what they did with the Hobbit, what they did with Fantastic Beasts, like all these. They're they're fine. They're fine. Yeah, it's just they're not. The Hobbit's awful. The Fantastic Hobbit. There's a, there's a solid. Found... There's a solid hour long Hobbit movie in that seven hours of Hobbit. Solid hour long. The problem movie. is there's seven hours. There's gr- it's great until you forget like like halfway through you're like wait are we still following that Hobbit is mm-hmm. he in this somewhere? Oh, it's wars we're gonna Did see. Did you watch two and three? I watched all of them. Oh wow. I mean, I watched them. Mm-hmm. At a certain point, though, the iPad came out, and I was just, like, s- fucking looking at forms on other yeah. stupid shit. Like, I wasn't paying attention anymore. But I, I, I trust HBO. I think that, like, they understand people like watching these series because they're good. And I think that they have to keep to a certain standard, and I, I could see the prequels being entertaining. I'm somewhere in the middle where I, I agree where it's just like, we, I don't need these to happen. I don't need them to be good. I don't need any of that. Mm-hmm. This is I believe that season eight's going to be great. It's going to close it out. I'm going to fucking love it. I like there being more. Why not? Yeah. It reminds me of earlier what I was saying with Death Note. The Death Note Netflix movie, for as bad as it is, does Real not bad. tarnish how good this series is. It, that's fair. But the, mm-hmm. but the one thing is like, I don't know, there's, there's just part of it that just doesn't want to have to have that to defend the original series if the prequel series is just not as good because people are going to go oh you know people have very short memories and go oh the prequel series sucks and I'm like oh no the first series just watch the first series I don't know you know what I mean it, it, it kind of waters me, it down a little bit I don't think so because but I'm also me. prejudging this before I've seen anything maybe I'll fucking love it and it'll be it's HBO and the fucking yeah. Game of Thrones maybe it's amazing who knows it reminds me of the MCU and then the the Marvel TV shows where it's like yeah those weren't good it's like oh they're kind of no they're not it doesn't yeah. fucking matter watch them or don't watch them you don't need to watch them. The, Shields, Agents of Shields, it's not bad. It's not it's great, great, not great good, but it's not matter. canon. I don't watch it. Just don't accept need to watch that, Ignacio. It that doesn't at all yeah. affect how good the MCU is. Yeah, 100%. Coulson is dead. Coulson is dead. That is a fact. Fuck Coulson. <sighs> Damn it. Fuck Coulson. Stop. I don't know. It's it's all right. I was just about to transition, and we Oh, for can't, the ads, sorry. Yeah, and we yeah. can't do that. It's okay. I'm sorry about that. No, no, it's fine. But yeah, Game of Thrones, man. I can't wait for it. I hope this is true because honestly, I want that much Game of Thrones. I want I think hours I, and hours of it. I definitely think it's true. I mean, and here's the thing: if uh-huh. this isn't exactly true, it doesn't mm. matter. They've already told yeah, us. Yeah, that's the thing. It's the, averaging ninety minutes. So, oh man, we're good. We good, baby. I can't wait. All right, Kev, you're good. Now it's time for some ads. <laughs> All right, Nick. I'll see you. No, no, we're good. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Screencast is brought to you by Eero. Mm-hmm. Eero is the Wi-Fi we always want, uh, wished for. <laughs> always wish we had in our homes. Let's start that over. Let's go sorry, from the sorry. top, Kev. It's cool. We're going to get through this. Screencast is brought to you by Eero's. Eero is the Wi-Fi we've always wished we had in our homes. A fast, reliable connection in every room 
and the backyard too. Mm -hmm. Total network protection. Eero Plus offers the ability to block malicious and unwanted content across your entire network. These are important things to do. It also has advanced security by checking the sites you visit against the database of millions of known threats. Eero Plus prevents you from accidentally visiting malicious sites without slow uh, slowing anything down. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest, it protects your family because you you probably know what sites you, you know what's up and shouldn't be on. But your mom, mm. they have trouble, you know. They do. They and do. these kind of things makes life better. Eero, E E R O. That's for those right. of you that are wondering, mm-hmm. um, I helped Gia's mom set this up at her house. She had an in-law unit that wasn't really getting good good Wi-Fi signal. Mm. We set this up. Yeah. Super easy to use. There's an app that just guides you through it all. Not only the setup, which is easy, but also optimizing to make sure everything's mm. good. You got the main thing, then there's these little satellites you just put around the house, and the next thing you know, you They're got equal beacons. beacons. Yeah, You got Wi-Fi everywhere. Here's the thing. Like, legitimately, the future of Wi-Fi is mesh networking, and that's what this is. It's not the future, Kev. It's, it's the, the now. The now. Uh, but you get w- uh, one base station, and then you get these two ones, and it adds Wi-Fi range. Mm-hmm. And... It doesn't do it so that you have to change networks in between. It's just one beautiful network that encompasses your house. Uh, Where can people go if they wanted it, Kev? Never think about Wi-Fi again. To get $100 off the Eero base unit and two beacon packages... And one year of uh, one year uh, of Eero Plus, visit eero.com slash kind of funny, and at checkout, enter kind of funny. That's e e r o dot com slash kind of funny. Enter code kind of funny. Thank you, Tim. Do we have another sponsor? No. No. That's it. That's it. Just the one. Okay. Just waiting for Nick. Cannonball. Take your time, Nicholas. Cannonball. <laughs> what are we talking about now? Guys? All right. So now we're bringing up this week's blockbuster. Topic. I changed okay. the name. I liked it. Got the it. Oscars are bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I sent you guys a video, and we'll include it in the description. That kind of goes over um, the Oscars. It was by Philip DeFranco. Philip DeFranco uh, is doing a new thing yeah. where uh, he has the Philip DeFranco show, but then he also has morning shows where uh, he has contributors do kind of deep dives into different news topics to to get to the bottom stuff. And it's really cool that it's a new like video essay format, but they also do uh, investigative journalism mm-hmm. interviews to get. Uh, Sound bites that are exclusive content, yeah. uh, backing up whatever argument they're making, and it's really good, really it's a fascinating great video. stuff. Yeah. And this video is about the Oscars and the process of the Oscars and the campaigns that go mm-hmm. into specifically Best Picture. And when I clicked on it, I was just like, "Oh, I'm sure we know all this already." I was blown away by how much I didn't know. As and, was and I. The, the process in general. Mm-hmm. If you guys want to check out this video, by the way, I'm sure we'll. Are we putting this in the uh, description? Yeah, I already or? said that. It's in the description. Copy that. Uh, yeah, the video is called. And the Oscar goes to dot 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 how uh, money and insane campaigns dedicated who wins big dictate who wins big dictate wins yeah you're right sorry <laughs> um, yeah I thought it was very fascinating I mean I had heard and I'd seen obviously like campaigning for mm-hmm. the Academy Awards if you live in Los Angeles around you know somewhere around November December you start seeing gigantic billboards that say for your consideration. Yeah. These movies, you know, well, and any any sort of film magazine, you're always seeing ads for like, hey, you should check the like for your consideration, this person for best cinematographer, this mm-hmm. and that. So it's not it, it wasn't crazy to me that the, the idea that, OK, you have to spend a lot a little bit of budget mm-hmm. to uh, to campaign for this stuff. Um, but what I didn't realize quite until sort of the tail end of this video how insidious this shit gets. Yeah, which is crazy. It's really, really interesting. First of all, I didn't realize movies had to be nominated. I just assumed that like they were all in some pool that people start voting in but they have to be nominated in so yeah they nominated to be nominated yeah exactly yeah. nominated to be nominated and uh and then it's yeah there's there's like that's weird too because i don't know how that happens is that just the mpa or the, or the academy of motion picture sciences and arts and whatever the academy they just pick a random pool of of movies no 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 people have to go and nominate this movie so someone has to I, I'm sure if you're part of the Academy, it's clear on how to do this. Right. But like, I'm hazy on that part. Yeah, yeah. Someone has to go and nominate this movie. So right now, someone had to go and nominate Black Panther for it to be in the consideration. And then it goes through this very complicated voting system. 
to actually. Well, it sounds get like the only one that's little. complicated is Best Picture. Yeah, so everything the, else is just oh, a straightforward. Yeah, boiled sorry, down, I was uh, talking about Best makes Picture. Sense. Yeah. What, what this the video that we're talking about the Philip DeFranco thing really was was saying is there's 24 different categories uh, and the Academy Awards, and all of them are pretty straightforward. If you're in the Academy, of which there's about between seven and eight thousand members, mm -hmm. uh, you get a vote. You vote. And it goes towards the thing. Whoever gets the most votes wins. With the exception of Best Picture. The way Best Picture works is, let's say there's eight movies in the category. Um, you need to rank all eight of the movies. You cannot just vote for the one you want. You need to rank all of them. Which means you need to see all of them. Which I doubt 8,000 people actually do. Which means a lot of the movies uh, that they don't watch get ranked lower. Yeah. And what happens is they do the whole point system of whoever gets the most points. But you don't win with the most points unless you have 50% of the total um, which is wild. Points. Yeah. If you if no movie has fifty percent, which it rarely does, they will cut the bottom movie out of it, retally, 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 keep doing that process over and over until a movie, movie gets has over fifty percent. Now, do you feel like this? There's this process because that helps ensure that the people like if people haven't seen the movie that that's a way of weeding that out. But maybe the, that's why they're doing I that. I think that that's the reasoning behind. I don't think that that actually works. Mm -hmm. because I think you could, that people because vote just looking at this list right. Them. Obviously like I'm looking at the best picture nomination list. It's Black Panther, Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Green Book, Roma, A Star is Born and Vice. I've only seen mm -hmm. 5 of these 8 movies. So I've like It's not bad though. Yeah, but I'm like I haven't seen Green Book. Yeah, but so I'm like, well, I can't really vote for Green Book, but I'd vote for Vice. Maybe Green Book's yeah. better. I don't know. But yeah. with this system, if you were in the Academy, you would then put Green Book mm -hmm. as one of the bottom ones right. because you had to do that, which is screwing that. So the the video, the point of the video is that Best Picture isn't actually the thing that wins because of most votes. It's the thing that is least disliked by mm -hmm. everybody, That's which is fucked up, crazy. I mean, first off, it's crazy to. It's like to have eight thousand people vote on stuff that they you, they may or may not have seen, which is which yeah, is unfortunate to silly. begin with. Um, so yeah, I mean, but this does seem very very needlessly convoluted. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, the other the other interesting aspect is if people don't want a movie to win, you can put it as your last. Yeah, and then that thus even like so if I didn't if I was like I'm jealous of Adam McKay, but I really liked Vice, but I'm gonna put Vice as my last movie on the list. It can it can uh, go uh, keep this. Let's see. Decrease the score for mm. that movie and hurt the movie's chances of actually becoming a best Which picture. is wild. That's pretty crazy. Mm. The other crazy shit was the Whisper campaign stuff. Yeah, that was and I was about to bring that up. Yeah. Because that's it's all this quiet stuff. So they're not allowed to, like, any, no companies are allowed to, like, try to sway the vote, right? There's rules to mm -hmm. being in the Academy, and one of them is you're not allowed to talk shit about the other. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to campaign against other movies. You can only campaign for your movie. Yeah, in in the movie they cited Hurt Locker, where one of the, like... One of the producers basically sent out an email blast saying, hey, hey vote this way. you should vote for my movie because it only costs a few million dollars versus Avatar, which costs $500 million. Mm -hmm. Like, vote for the indie. That's what this was for. Like this, And, and, and he got banned from going, he got banned and from going to the Oscars. And still won the Oscar that year. Well, the movie won. Yeah. And he, the, uh, well, he directed he, it, right? He won as well. Produced, no, he produced right. it. Catherine oh, okay. Nicholson directed it. Um, so it's interesting, and that makes sense, and I like that about mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. um, but it, but the but the idea that they're hiring PR firms and marketing firms to to do like a sort of subversive whisper campaign, or actually have articles come out that can you know denigrate the movies ahead of time, mm -hmm. is kind of crazy. Well, they were talking about Zero Dark Thirty and how there was uh, legal action brought on by like the United States government uh, questioning, like, hey, was the, where did you get this? The footage for the no, not the footage. The inspiration for the, for the uh, it was classified information yeah. that they were using in the movie. Yeah. Taking a step back for this to explain to people who haven't watched mm -hmm. the video, so they're not allowed to talk shit about other movies. So the whisper campaigns you're talking about mm -hmm. is they're hiring PR firms to uh, quietly to come legally in. Mm -hmm. come around, and they're not talking shit about the movie and saying not to vote for it, uh -huh. but they're creating reasons for people not to vote for or it. to right. dislike the movie. Um, for example, last year with um, the Shape, Shape of Water, Water yeah. um, an article went up right around the time of voting mm -hmm. where they're saying that Guillermo del Toro plagiarized yeah. the script and then, and then when immediately they, when voting was over they came out like oh no it's all good don't worry about yeah. it and it's like and that's the same thing happened with Zero, Zero Dark Thirty, 30. where that like I I can't remember what who it was in the government but they in, like once the nominees were like once it, the voting was done they like the case was dropped mm -hmm. and it's just like man the sure. amount of power that like you can have to do that it's worth noting that these are this is not proven we don't know that this is 100 right this, this is, is just kind yeah. of 
speculatory and given, uh, given the timing kind of. It's real convenient sense. when it happens. Look, at the end of the day, these are awards mm-hmm. um, that a private organization is is you know putting yeah. on, and they don't really they they mean just as much as everyone wants them to mean, right? The inherent mm-hmm. value of these is just whatever we're willing to accept as an inherent value. The main reason I wanted to bring this topic up be- is uh, is because. Clerks should have gotten it. You know what I mean? Like, now we understand why Clerks, a small budget movie, couldn't get Best Picture that year. And not only that. Hey, Clerks! Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not only Fuck that. Fuck Lord of the Rings. Fuck Lord of the Rings. That's exactly right. What did Lord of the Rings had to do to get its Oscar that year? Some dirty shit, I'm sure. You guys, go and figure it for out clarity, for me. I, I, just so if everyone's Some wondering, dirty. Clerks and Lord of the Rings did not come out. <laughs> In the same year, and they were not against each other for the Academy Oh, Awards. yeah, no, I wasn't trying to imply just, that at just all. Just letting everyone know But, that. you know, if they were, what would you choose? I don't even think Clarks was nominated for an Academy Award, right? No, I don't think so I at all. So. I really <laughs> hope it was. Best picture, Clarks. <laughs> Right. Um, but like just quickly, screenplay? out of the movies that are there that have been nominated, so Nick, you went through the list a minute ago, but I'll do for so best picture. For again best for best picture. What do you guys? What do you guys want to see, and what do you think is going to win? Uh, I still haven't seen Green granted, Book. I have no interest in seeing The Favorite. That was a uh, that's the uh, what's her name. Um, Emma Stone mm-hmm. uh, movie. It's a period piece. I have no interest in that. I've seen Bohemian Rhapsody. It shouldn't win. Black Klansman was good, mm-hmm. but I don't think it should win. I don't think Black Panther should win at all. Um, haven't seen Roma yet because I can't bring myself to pull the trigger on that one because I'm like, God, yeah, it's going to be so it's, fucking it's long. It looks like it's going to be so emotional, it's just so too. so long. And then I saw Makuga's tweet where he's like, is there a plot to this movie? I'm like, oh, no, it's mm. experiential. I don't want that. Uh, my vote is for Vice as best picture, and I, my vote is also for lead actor Christian Bale and Vice. I, I, I agree fu- with I the, was fucking the awesome. lead actor Christian Bale because I thought he was phenomenal. Another amazing role for him. I, there's too many movies in here I haven't seen. It's really upsetting. Well, I just feel like Bohemian yeah. Rhapsody being on there. Like we've we've had our criticisms of the movie. It's a fun movie, but it's not. Dude, I, I don't think it, it should be even like, in this category. It's offensive to me. It's in this category. I look at this. I'm like, this is all such garbage. As yeah. much like, as I love Queen, like I also find a little offensive that it's in here because I just don't feel like it's a strong movie. It's not. It's an awesome like experience. Yeah, it's it's fun. Yeah. It's great music. It's a concert. It's it's very, a fun it, blockbuster type movie. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But it's like I don't like up against these movies. It's so mm-hmm. weird. Even looking at this. So I haven't, there's a bunch I haven't seen. Black yeah. Klansman, I still need to see that. I, have you seen that one yet? I did. I watched it last weekend. Is it good? It's good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see it's that. Good. It did, but it did, it was, it's good. Like, it's a good movie, but I just, you know, I was like, I don't know that it necessarily needs best, it best picture. Out of these, the ones that I haven't seen that I still want to see are Black Klansman and Vice. Uh, well, I, think like I think you'll yeah. like both. I think you'll like both. Vice, I, that looks Black awesome. Black Klansman's just Black Klansman's so good. A because it's Spike Lee. B the cast is great. And C because it's a fucking real story. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, this is weird as fuck. This yeah. really happened. And I haven't seen A Star Is Born, but it is another one of those movies that I just can't believe is in this category. Yeah. You know, it's similar to I, yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. It's I, like, I absolutely can believe it's very different than Bohemian Rhapsody. Really? It's a very, very distinctively different movie. Um, it's more about the characters and the acting is fucking phenomenal. And just looking at the the supporting actors category, mm-hmm. uh, Mahershala Ali for Green Book is amazing. Adam Driver was great in Black Klansman, but Sam Elliott fucking knocked my socks off in A Star Is Born. And I my votes for him, I would vote for Sam Elliott as a supporting actor because he plays have- the older brother. And if you have a brother, you're just like. There are scenes you're just like fuck. Like I literally left the theater. I was like, I gotta call my brother because Damn. Of it was yeah. so fucking. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, I did. To be it. fair, I didn't have the extra hour. But yeah. And, and also then, Black Panther. It's like I. I think that it's super cool and important that that movie's there just for comic book movies and for what uh, these lists usually mm-hmm. look like. But like, are you fucking kidding me? That for best picture? No. no yeah. Not a yeah. chance. I would put Blind Spotting over Black Panther for like that type of importance of a movie. It's weird that Blind Spotting well, is not even anywhere on here. Yeah, Blind it's Spotting just, got super snubbed this year. Black Panther, like, I, if the third act was stronger, it, I feel like it'd have a place here. But I just also am surprised it's here. It is really cool that it's here because it's just like the, to see a comic book movie to hit these heights. Yeah, is it's never happened before. Dark Knight. Yeah, but the thing about the the thing about that is like well, Dark Knight was like, only there's a lot. No, it was it wasn't Best Picture, right? We well, got nominated. Heath Ledger got nominated. Yeah, for, for mm, and won Best actually, Actor. Possibly. Uh The thing about Black Panther is, I feel like it's 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 cultural relevance is what's driving this, mm-hmm. not necessarily the yeah. merit of how good the movie is. To me, I still argue that it is a solid mid tier Marvel movie that should be ranked. I, where, where is it on our list? Like tenth or something like that. I think it's in the right place. Though. Yeah, it sounds about right. Right. Good <laughs> yeah, movie, yeah, yeah. cool movie, but as far as like superhero movies go, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So I still want to watch Black Klansman, Roma, and A Star is Born. 
And out of the three movies that I've seen on this list, which are Black Panther, Bohemian Rhapsody, and Vice, I, I would give it to Vice just because that... Uh, Fuck yeah. But I, I do I intend to Book watch yet, these three though. movies and maybe Green Book. Roma, but see, Roma's one of those things that we're going back to the campaigning, right? Yeah. Where they've spent how much how much money did Netflix spend on on their campaign for this? Like twenty well, million that or something like that. Deal. Yeah, like, it, was a, Roma, it was a ridiculous like, number. It's ridiculous. Netflix and Netflix wants, wants an Academy wants Award. an Academy Award to legitimize their movies. Yeah, but yeah. that's but this is the problem, right? It's like eh, like I, uh, I, it's hard to say yeah. because we don't care about Roma, right? I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that do care Finnegan about it. Finnegan loves it and there's so it there you just like all of a sudden it hit the mm. fucking it, it it hit Netflix and you can't stop hearing about yeah. this and I'm like dude I, the like campaign this is, is working this the campaign is definitely working yeah. but it feel it doesn't feel organic it doesn't feel the same way where like a show that Netflix puts out and doesn't put a ton of money on yeah, but, but just is very is very good yeah the, what's that these awards are never organic never have been never will be. no but I will say this like as far as uh, I don't know I mean I just feel like. Netflix is is buying their way in in a way that just seems really really just kind of crazy and it'll, mm. not not insidious but like would Roma but be I, would would Roma deserve to be on this list if Netflix hadn't spent any money on it? Probably. No, I, well, I haven't seen that about. for literally all of these movies. You know, no, nah, Vice is pretty good, pretty good. I don't know if it's gonna win, but it's pretty good. I I don't. Like it as a movie, but that's just because the topic is so messed up. I loved yeah. it. It's so dark. So I think a more interesting question, not just what we'd want to win, but like what's going to win? Because looking at this, yeah. I don't think there's a clear standout. I don't, I don't either. But that's, I think uh, my biggest problem is I haven't seen a bunch of these movies. I feel like as far as, God damn, yeah, that's hard though. Because I feel like Green Book has a lot of, uh, what, what won the Golden Globes? Bohemian Rhapsody won Golden Globes, yeah, right? Yeah, it did. Which so I it's don't think will repeat. That, no. It's possible. I don't think so. Uh, Old I feel like A Star is Born has a shot too because Bradley Cooper and Gaga are like huge. There is no way, I, I'm just saying this, no way A Star is Born or Bohemian Rhapsody win this. Have you Maybe seen the favorite. A Star is Born? No. A Star is Born is actually a good movie. Which is actually, actually the best picture of 2018. That, no, like, but I really I have enjoyed seen it, it. But I've seen, yeah. I've heard so many different people have different opinions that are yeah, it's, not overwhelmingly. It's positive. Pol- I mean, it's polarizing. But I, I really liked it, and I really liked it specifically before the performances. I, and I really liked it specifically for the fact that they sang and performed on stage. It's very, very special. Mm. Unlike, and that was the biggest problem with me with Bohemian Rhapsody was that Remy Malek wasn't really singing the entire time, and it looked some of the lip, lip singing was really bad in that movie, mm. as was some of the green screen stuff. Here, they actually went around to like music festivals and was like hey surprise we're fucking here we're going to shoot this we're going to do this song for you guys and it really feel it in moments it's very mm-hmm. special and so and it's not the best you know no i th- i still put a vice i think vice is just a fucking 10 out of 10 for me that movie was so well made and so poignant and so fucking like clever and beautifully edited and wonderfully acted by the entire cast amy adams up for a supporting actress role so good Should absolutely yeah. fucking be in the running for that um I don't know. Sam Rockwell as fucking George W. He's was amazing. Fucking awesome. Hilarious. And only in the movie yeah. for like 10 minutes, but yeah, just phenomenal. But it was enough. Phenomenal. Anything more would have been too much. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah. again, I haven't seen half of these movies, so yeah. I should shut the fuck up. I say out, the favorite but. ones. It's a period piece. A lot of votes are going to be split. Old white people like per- period pieces. And because Maybe. of that, I'd go Green Book. I think Green Book just has a bit more. I feel it, like it's like that type of thing of just mm-hmm. like it's not super popular, but it's more popular than Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Favorite. And it looks good. I haven't seen it. I mean, Harsh Holly is awesome. I'm going to try so. to watch all these movies on this list. Viggo Mortensen is lead actor. Forms. That's It's yeah. weird that he's lead actor and Mahershala Ali's supporting actor. But I haven't seen the film yet. I, have you guys seen Green Book at all? No. That's weird. No, I've, that's seen tra- yeah. I've seen trailers and it feels like the... Yeah, it does feel like... It feels like it's a do- like a, the, the cast, they're equal in it. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe Viggo, maybe it follows Viggo Mortensen more mm. as the <sighs> primary. And then as far as best, as best directors, uh, let's see. Spike Lee... Black Landsman, Powell Powolinski for Cold War. Hmm. I have no idea what the hell that is. Yar- Yargos Lanthimos for the favorite. Okay, Alfonso Cuarón mm-hmm. for Roma and Adam McKay for Vice. I fucking hope Adam McKay wins. Alfonso. I hope he wins. I hope the guy that directed Anchorman <laughs> wins a fucking Academy Award. Good God. Uh, for animated feature, that's the one that I'm most interested in here. We yeah. got. Uh, can you pull that up? Oh yeah, sorry, some, sorry. Uh, we got Incredibles two. We got Isle of Dogs. Mireille. Ralph Breaks the Internet and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I don't know what Murray is. I should look into that. But looking at this list, but it's man, funny because we thought it was between list, yeah. Incredibles 2 and Spider-Verse. I didn't even think about Isle of Dogs. Uh, I had but no Isle of Dogs. Isle of Dogs came so out in good. 2018. Yeah. I think Isle of Dogs is going to fuck Spider-Man out of winning. I you think don't so? don't think no. so. Only because Isle of Dogs is beautiful. I want Spider-Man to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isle of Dogs was great, yeah. though. But it's not 
like it, it sucks. I can't judge this one because I love I love both. It's like yeah. give, either one, I'm fine winning. But I want Spider Verse to not I want Spider Verse. I want Spider Verse so to win, but that's because I forgot about Isle of Dogs. I, I also feel really... like Wes Anderson. Spider Verse transcends the medium of what it does as an animated movie. Sure. Isle of Dogs is a really good animated movie, but like Barrett's making some strong points. I mean, I get it. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, I feel like the introduction of that mm-hmm. is going to split the vote in sure. a way that's where not good. when it was just in my head, Incredibles two versus Spider Verse, I'm like. I think they could do it. Well, now they don't. Uh, these are not best pictures, so their voting system is. Yep. <laughs> is it, more normal, I, having but, watched it, but I think that's what is going to hurt it because mm-hmm, that yeah. splits the vote in a different mm-hmm, way, mm-hmm. where every vote actually really matters for what they're actually saying yes see, to. Yeah. I don't see a ton of people voting for Incredibles too. Like, I, no, I don't either. I, 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 I think that was a fantastic movie. Good movie. But I've seen it twice. It, you know, it was a good. good year for animated movies. Yeah, but Isle of Dogs is legitimately a great movie, and Spider-Verse, I think, is just, just the there's best. Just it's, not, bias, it's not though. the first year Pixar has come out with, a, or Disney has come out with a movie that's like, fine, and it still wins Best Animated Picture. Over uh, like, yeah. Sure, but like, I think this shit. year there are some heavy, heavy contenders yeah. like, going up against it. Mm-hmm. What else is on here? Original mm-hmm. screenplay? Meh. Nah. This is where we get. It's like some of these just don't need to be in here. Best documentary short subject. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody That's cares. the stuff that like Pat like the they don't do. Come on, on this stage. Bo- the whole bottom of this best foreign film. I'm not reading subtitles. Doggy dog. <laughs> Let's go, man. Get that shit out of here. All right. Make I'm the Academy on. Awards at hour fifteen. Hour I'm gonna 20. move us on to our next segment, which is. Uh, the bronze level tier uh, question of the week. What movie do you want to win best picture? Go to the bronze level tier on patreon.com slash kind of funny and tell me what movie out of the eight nominees should win the Oscar. This will be screencast first ever Oscar screencast people's choice award. Whoa. 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 So are we going to make a little like a, we should, what we should do is take a bunch of those little chocolates, take all the foil off and make our own little Oscar. Little Oscar. Yeah, dude. Can you person. get on top of that? Oh, I'll be right I'm gonna, on that. I'm gonna give that to you then. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, and then we can see uh, out of the people watching screencasts on uh, the bronze tier what you guys want. There it is. So let me know. There it is. It took me a second. Sorry. Uh, last week I asked you what I should watch, and many best friends responded. Here are some. <clears throat> DJ Kento, a simple favor, which I then watched. Yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Fine Man, movie. That movie in the third act really loses it. Yeah. Uh, it goes way out of here. That's the uh, that's the one with uh, Blake Lively and Anna yeah. Kendrick. Yeah. 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 Fucking Did you movie. see the alternate ending? No. Would you alternate... believe me, Kevin? I'm not making this up. Uh-huh. There's an alternate ending you can see on YouTube. Yeah. Where they literally go into a Bollywood style flash dance. No. Way where for six minutes I would believe there's that. an extended scene Love of it. all of them just dancing and it's fucking bizarre. <laughs> that movie that that's one of those movies that it, my wife was like, "Do you want to go see this movie with me?" And normally I'm like, "I'll see whatever. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Give me a big diet coke." Dog nicks in, but I watched the trailer for it. I was like, "This looks like a bad made for TV movie, starring really good actresses." That's what and it is. I don't understand. It, it this. was. Okay, like it looks like, like Dirty John, kind of. Yeah, like, what the fuck's yeah, happening? yeah. And then when it gets that last act, you're just like, "What? Yeah. Right, this is what you're going with?" Oh, she's. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Wow. So yeah, I watched it. Thank you for that recommendation. I did for the most part enjoy it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, right. I wouldn't recommend it to a friend though. So DJ Kenta, you know, watch. What's your, your movie pass score, watch Kevin? Your back. Movie pass score, definitely. No, you know what? I think I have to go bad. I'm One, sorry. Down. Yeah, One down. One down. One down. One down. Um. Sean I says, Kevin, you should watch Punisher Season 2. You'll get all the action that should be in a Punisher show, and you don't have to go through the whole Oregon story. Um, I watched, I watched six first. episodes Did of you? Punisher Season 2. I couldn't get past the second episode. Yeah, it's boring. Oh, really? No, here's yeah. what happens. The oh, first episode? I, I find it boring. Uh, the first episode, I was like, I like the first the episode. The action's cool. I was like, oh, this is cool. We're yeah. kicking it off with the fucking yeah, thing, yeah, some yeah. sex, and so he's fucking people up. Yeah. There's a great bar fight where he just fucking murks people. A lot And of then them. we go back to Jigsaw. And the other FBI agent mm-hmm. who was terrible in the first series, yeah. and you're like, what the fuck are we and doing? And there's a lot more And he's more just of like that. tripping out in a fucking bed mm-hmm. for I'm like, what are you doing? Get back to the story. I'm done. And, 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 like I'm going done. into it, it just I after like episode three, I was like, Why are we doing this? And Paul was like, I don't know, he's hot. And I was like, right, we'll keep going though. for a while. She saw the 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 bartender, uh, uh yeah, she's, Alexa. She's beautiful. Davros, whatever the girl from the Man in the High Castle. Yeah. Those two together, I'm like, let's put them on screen yeah. more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, we the get kid, one episode. Of her, cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's done. John Bernthal, yeah. man. Big Anyways, uh, thank I'm you for the recomm- uh, recommendation. Um, but after checking it out, it just wasn't for me. Wasn't for me at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Charter, <Charter's button. laughs> never mind. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, J- uh, Jake Cotrain says, Kevin has to watch Upgrade. Great music, cinematography, and all over cool vibe. It was my top five last year. And that was made, uh, you, that would have made your list. I, uh, I really want to watch it. That's on my list of stuff to watch this week. Which was an upgrade? Upgrade. So this oh, is, I want to see that movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah that movie there's a guy right. who gets attacked. Yeah. His wife gets killed. He yeah. becomes Everyone a says quadriplegic. It's, it's Venom. It's like what Venom yeah, should have that's, been. Yeah, that's actually what he said. And I actually cut that but it's out like of Venom, his. But it's like Venom, but it's also like, uh, what was that fucking Statham movie where he had a heart that he had to keep his dick oh. hard or some shit like that? Remember, oh, it's not <laughs> torque. It's uh, no, no. it's um, what the hell was it? It's not speed. People were saying it's kind of like that. Crank, like, crank, crank, yeah. They were like, I was like, oh, I'll fucking watch Which this shit out of that. Which they made two of those. Yeah, Fuck yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah they did. The second one, he has to have sex in public, and it was I, great. Yeah. It was great. Uh, and great the last one filmmaking. Of, <laughs> the last one of these, uh, Matt Rohrbach recommended <laughs> Serenity, stars Matthew McConaughey and Anne Hathaway. It's a noir, a neo noir set in the world of tuna fishing. It oh, has fuck. one of the most bizarre twists I've ever seen in a movie, and it's not. Uh, oh, it's not good, but fascinating. A lot of people have Baker, been tweeting yeah. at me. They'd be like, "Tim, I know you're not going to watch this movie. Yeah. At least look up the twist. It's fucking crazy." Baker so, Dill no, is no, a fishing it. boat captain who leads tours off the tranquil enclave of. Plymouth Island. His peaceful life is soon shattered when his ex-wife Karen tracks him down. Desperate for help, Karen begs Baker to save her and their young son. And from her abusive husband, she wants him to take the brunt out of, to take the brute out for a fishing excursion, then throw his ass overboard to the sharks. Okay. So uh, I don't like movies like this. Yeah, it's like Sleeping with the Enemy. Movies. It's too stressful. It's it's crazy because the trailer you watch it and it's like, oh man. Oh, it's out in theaters this right now. This looks terrible. Yeah, it's out this week, oh. which I'll talk about in a second. Okay. Um, it looks terrible. Like, the acting, they're not trying at yeah, all. Right. Remember but when Matthew McConaughey was just the fucking it guy? Mm-hmm. And now he's doing movies about fishermen and throwing pieces of I mean, you can tell a lot of movie, a lot of money was put into this movie. I mean, it's got uh, huge actors. Does. My suggestion is to go back and watch First Reformed. It's also fucked up, slow burn thrill, starring Ethan Hawke as an alcoholic priest who has cancer. Uh, I looked no. up the trailer. This yeah. looks crazy. No. Ethan Hawke is such an intense actor. <laughs> no, I'm down dude. to watch this. It's on Prime, so if Can't anyone's interested, also. What, an alcoholic priest? Mm-hmm. No. Who has, has cancer. cancer, too. cancer? Yeah. Like, no, that's too stress. He's an alcoholic priest with cancer and fights aliens. You're like, oh, that's too many <laughs> fucking things. Too many fucking things. Remember Cowboys and Aliens? That was I, just a thing. Yo, it was actually that a that terrible was a movie. John Favreau movie, and you were like, oh no, his career's done. Did you watch done. it? And then he did Iron Man. Yeah, it was bad. It wasn't that bad. I didn't see it. It, it was, was one of those movies where... Wasn't where, uh, Craig... What, was what's Daniel his Craig was Daniel the lead Craig in it. Daniel Craig in it, yeah. Olivia Wilde was the, was the other lead, if I'm not mistaken. And you're like, this is interesting. And then you watch it, and you're like, man, stick to Bond. Your career, just stick to Bond. Did you watch it in 3D? No. I made it a lot better of an well, experience. You know what? I'm I'm sad I didn't. <laughs> All right. So out this week, uh, streaming plat on streaming platforms, Amazon. Not much. Amazon uh, Prime has Fahrenheit uh, 11 nine out, what, what which is, is a Michael Moore movie about Donald Trump being president. Yeah. So we all know you, it's horrible. Fahrenheit nine eleven. Yeah, but he flipped it in the Did, trailer. They flip it. D- really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's called Fahrenheit eleven nine. Eleven nine. I don't know what that signifies. Is that when he got nominated or got voted in rather? That sounds right. Was that election day? Sounds right. No, November election day is the, was the 6th, I believe. You know, yeah. Barrett, why do you ruin my fucking... Just lie to us. Yeah, shut Just up. lie to us. The internet doesn't know. No one's going to look it up. No one's going to correct All us right, in, the, uh, in the comments of this video also on YouTube. Also, on, on Netflix, we have Conversations with a Killer, the Ted Bundy tapes. I started watching that. Shit that shit looks intense. It's intense. It's messed up stuff. It's audio of like I have Ted that, Bundy talking. I have that queued up yeah. right next to a movie called uh, Copycat. Starring mm-hmm. Sigourney Weaver, uh-huh. and in the trailer of Copycat, she's like, "I'd like." She's talking to this giant auditorium of go- of people. Yeah. She goes, "I'd like all the men to stand up," and then weeds all of the men out that are aren't white and between the ages of like thirty and forty five. And she's like, "These are the majority of serial killers." Like, 
You're like you, any one of these guys could be serial killers. That's and really they just look at up. all of them. And then I scrolled over and it's the Ted Bundy and they look like the guys yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, ah, everyone's a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> um, also on Netflix, Hotel Transylvania 3. Love it. Summer yes. vacation. So, well, you know, yes. wait, 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 watch wait, wait, something wait. scary, watch something Hotel cool. Hotel Transylvania 3? The yeah. one that like already on Netflix? On the boat? It's on a yeah. boat? Yeah. The one that like Nick I swear to God that like I've Hoover seen trailers for that a watch. million times. Yeah. I thought it still wasn't on theater. No, no, it's it been out. out. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, okay. yeah we had Cougar and I had a date, Cougar but I, I flaked on him. Broke his heart. Oh, no. We talked about it for days him. afterwards. Oh, I flaked on him. Yeah, that was a summer um, movie. And uh, nothing that I think I watched all the trailers for the eight movies that came out this week. And in theaters, they all yeah in theaters and. I, there's none that I wanted to like actually watch, so I nothing mm, to recommend mm, in the movie theaters. That's unfortunate. Um, yeah. Is there is there more segments or can I? No, that's it. Quick? We're all done. I, I wanted to say because I brought this up uh-huh, last uh-huh, week uh-huh. that it's we're a little early for yeah. February 14th, which is Happy Death Day to you. But I did watch Ooh. Happy Death Day one Love it. Yeah? this weekend, and what a dumb ass movie that is. But is it fun, fun as hell, yes. man? And it I am so hyped yeah, to watch yeah, yeah. two. Like the trailer for two sold us. We're yep, like this is absolutely. cool. Watching and it spoils one. one. <laughs> It does, but like, yeah, time traveling. But it stuff. doesn't yeah, matter. Sure. And watching time the tra- the trailer for two after watching one like back to back, I'm like, uh-huh. it makes the trailer for two even better. Where you're just like, wow, they are really just going right back to the same well, and it's like such a parody of itself. I fucking can't wait. I highly recommend watching Happy Death Day if you want to waste an hour and a half of your life. That sounds like a yeah. good plan. Love it. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us this week on Screencast. If you enjoyed it, remember, hit like, subscribe, hit that little bell so you keep seeing us. Ding dong. Ding dong. (laughs) And I don't really have a good outro yet, but I'll think of something soon. We'll see you. We'll see you. At the movies. movies. No, that we can't do that. Legally speaking, we can't. They don't watch this fucking show. I'm going to go pee pee. They don't watch this.